Okay, we're on. Okay, so I call it the observer or self inquiry. And uh, the question in self inquiry is what, what am I? Who am I? You know, what am I? Who am I? So the way to, to get that started is to recognize, you know, to take a reading. How do you experience yourself in this moment? Uh, and whatever, do you experience yourself as the body, as a feeling within the body? Do you experience yourself as your thoughts? What is it that you experience yourself as? And that is your sense of self. Uh, but is, is, that, is that you? You know, so the thing with the sense of self, is there something... Uh, I always like using uh, an object. If um, if I experience myself to be, uh, let's see, this um, this mobile phone. If I experience myself to be this mobile phone, no, that's all the wrong way. Is anybody in this room a mobile phone? No. Anyone here a mobile phone? No. Okay. So this is an object. Okay. First of all, a mobile phone is an object. And it's a, what I call it is, it's an object with limitations. This is not a limitless mobile phone. It has like dimensions, it has a height, it has a width, okay? Also, this mobile phone is what I call a, meaning, a meaningless object. It's an object which is not special uh, to anyone in this room. So. Now, if you can see the dimensions of this object and it's meaningless, it becomes very, very clear there's detachment. And it becomes very, very clear that you are that which is observing the mobile phone. Now, everyone who's, who's observing the mobile phone is the observer, being the observer of the mobile phone, is the observer of the mobile phone bigger than the limits of this phone? The height and width. Yes or no? Yeah. Yes, yes what? Sorry, it's bigger. bigger. Good. Everyone in agreement with that? Mm -hmm. The observer has to be bigger than that which is observed to be smaller. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Could I? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you were on camera, so, but you can uh, ask, yeah. Well, I was just going to ask, well, could an ant, for example, an ant observing a much larger object, could that still be the observer even though it's smaller than the object that it's observing? Uh, so, this is an experiential exercise. Okay, so it's not it's not a hypothetical okay. question. So yeah, I don't know why I'm trying to pick this part. Continue. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that, yeah. That, that, that's uh, fine. Yeah, that's that's fine. Enough. But it's uh, you know uh, that it's not it's not the exercise we're doing here. Uh, we can go into that later on, but it's not really uh, that would be an escape from the exercise. So the observer, the observer of this phone is bigger. Yeah, we're all in agreement. Okay, so. What about then, so, so, and also this is meaningless, so there's no enmeshment, there's no idea that, you know, this could be you. No one's confused that, you know, the, the mobile phone. Okay, so the next thing is, when something passes, like if, like if, uh, let's use the, the mobile phone, there can be an experience of observing without a mobile phone, and there can be an experience of observing with a mobile phone and there can be an experience of the mobile phone passing. Yeah. But even if the mobile phone is in front of you, or if it's not there, or it passes, does it affect who you are? No. Because you, you are the observer that knows when it's here and when it's gone. And even if it was gone, gone, you'd still be here. Yeah. Okay, good. So those, those are some of the basic elements of, uh, of, ex of of being clear in what you're not. Yeah? You're, in that exercise, you're clear in what you're not. You're not that that is observed in front of you. And you're not, that, that's, you're not anything that will come and go. Because even if it's here for... Even if I put this mobile phone in front of you for three days, would you be the mobile phone? No. No. Because if you ever experience the mobile phone not here, and you're still here, that, that means you can exist without the mobile phone. Are we in agreement? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, good. So just because you might say, well, the mobile phone's here today, I am the mobile phone, but you've experienced yourself not being the mobile phone. Mm -hmm. So you actually, you're not the mobile phone. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so that's, that's, I think that's an introduction to self-inquiry, to getting clarity in what you are and what you are not. So let's take the next, so these are, these are, all of these exercises are practical exercises. They're not for you to think about or make uh, rationalizations about them. So next thing is your thinking, thoughts. Thoughts, uh, if, you know, you can disagree with me, you'll be on camera, but thoughts come and go, don't they? They pass, they change. You get an endless stream. Sometimes there's lots of thoughts. And there's probably been experiences when there's been no thoughts. Even for a second, there might have been no thoughts. Or there might be an endless stream of thoughts, or lots of thoughts, or no thoughts, or not a thought even for a, for a brief second. There could be the experience of no thought. Okay, so this is a practical exercise. Is there, is there a witnessing or an observing of thoughts? Yeah, okay, good. So then, if one is experiencing being the witnesser of thoughts, it, is the witnesser of thoughts a thought? Is that which witnesses thoughts coming and going? Is that, is that a thought? It's an exper experiential exercise. Repeat that again. Can you repeat that again? That would, if you, can you experience that which is observing thoughts? Can you be the observer of thoughts? It's an experiential question. Yes. Do you experience that now? Is there an observing now that is not your thinking? Thank you. Well, I, I think it's possible. No, yeah, well, thinking is, I'm not asking for thinking. Uh, so, like, if, if this, mob this mobile phone is now passing in front of me, or this mobile phone is here in front of me, mm -hmm. There is a clear experiential experience of observing the phone yeah. and an experience that clearly, experientially, that this phone is not me. Mm -hmm. yeah? this, is not, this is not an intellectual understanding. Mm -hmm. is I there is an experiencing mm -hmm. the mobile phone is not me. I, yeah. th there is an experience of witnessing or observing of the phone, which is a clear experience that the phone is not what I am. Sure. So thoughts. You know, many thoughts may be coming and going. Is there, is, is, there an exp is there something here which is witnessing the thoughts, which is not the thoughts? Yes. There, there is that experience? Yeah. Good. Can you be in the observer? In the observer, are the thoughts you? No. No, good. So that, that is correctly done as an experience. So when, so there is, there, that's a spiritual awakening. That's a spiritual awakening experience because some people, you know, if they see a mobile phone, they believe they are the mobile phone. But when they experience that they are, there, is a, there is a more limitless experience of sense of self, which is independent of whether a, th a thought is here or not, or passing or not then you experience a sense of self which can exist with or without thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, good. So the next thing is... Um, okay, the next thing is... Uh, and we're trying not to go into thinking or rationalization. We want to go into the experience. Now, if anyone is experiencing their body right now, like the body, if, you, if you're identified with your body, then you'll, you'll experience like the shape or the limits or, or the sense of self. There'll be parameters to the body. Okay? So everyone was clear that they are observing. There is observation of the phone, yes? So if you've got any sense of the body, uh, see if there is that which is observing or witnessing. Can one have an experience of that which is witnessing? So let's say I was aware that, oh, yes, there's, there's this, this shape, and it feels like I'm stuck in this shape. But is there something which is observing this shape which is not this shape? Yeah. 
Is there a witnessing of the limits? And is the witnesser of the limits? Is the witnesser of the limits limited or confined to any form of limit or contraction? No. Excellent. That's right. So the, the witnesser is limitless. The witnesser is not in is not contract there is a witnesser that witnesses the limits. And that witnesser is not limited to the limits. That's an experience. Well done. That's, that's good. So, there, can, there is an experience of a sense of self which is not thoughts, which exists whether thoughts are here or not. And there's a sense of self uh, that is limitless of the body, independent of the body, whether there's awareness of the body or not. That's a very good. Okay, now, what about images, pictures and memories from childhood that can come and go and flash, or pictures of what, you, of what might be or what might come? Is there something here that observes pictures coming and going? And is that which observes pictures, is that a picture? No. Excellent. These are, these are correct answers. They should come from experience. That which observes anything that comes and goes and passes is actually, it's not, that which observes pictures is not a picture. The observer of pictures is not a picture. The observer of thoughts, the witnesser of thoughts is not thought. The witnesser, the observer of the limits of the body is not the body. It's beyond the body. It's limitless. It's eternal. In this uh, short exercise, one starts to experience a sense of self which is not thought, a sense of self which is not uh, the body, a sense of self which is not images. Another thing that happens uh, within a lot of people's egos is some, there is something within the ego that likes counting seconds or tracking time. And there is something which observes time, observes the sense of time, but it has no interest in time, you know. Is there something here which has, which is not interested in time, which actually is, has no fascination with time, and in that place which observes time with no interest of time, does time exist? In the observer, does time exist? No. No, good. Time does not exist. So there's no time, there's no body, there are no thoughts. So the sense of self is not a thought. The sense of self is not limited by the limits of the body. The sense of self is not an image that can come and go. Now, if after, and this is an experiential exercise, you can get the answers from your own experience. Now, if this sense of self that you've experienced now is in any way contracted, limited, or feels like it's, you know, uh, feels some kind of shape or image or feeling, then you just carry, the, carry on. What's observing this? Is the observer of anything that's remaining, does that observer contain any semblance of anything left? No. No, that's correct. Okay, so I'll put the camera because put the camera.